getting better. Now, they look more nastier. Whatever. They look more nastier, <laughs> but <laughs> they're not going to be any different from what we just did. Okay? Not any different from what we just did. All you have to remember is that you're finding LCD and using the LCD to simplify denominators. That's what you're doing. In order to find the LCD on this problem, though, you have to do something first. What is that thing first? I'm in the first one. Okay, and that, that means we're going to factor that. So right now on your own, I'm going to do on the board, factor that right now. These two, you're fine. They're all right. <coughs> factor that one. Did you factor it? Yeah. Yeah. I know one's positive and one's <coughs> negative because you're getting a negative at the end. I know the bigger one's got to be positive. Hopefully you found 5 and 3, 5 and negative 3. Mm -hmm. I'm probably going to stop showing you the diamond method on the board because we've covered it so many times, you know, just how to do it. So I'm going to find the numbers like that. We, we need to be able to do that on your own at this point. You can find the x plus 5, x minus 3. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hey, you're also pros of this. Let's find our LCD. LCD is a listing of every different factor that you have. Can you see the LCD up here? Yeah. Yes. What's one factor in here? Okay. What's another factor in here? What's another factor in here? Is that it? Okay, let's check. X plus 5, we have that? Mm -hmm. X minus 3, we have that? Yeah. X minus 3? Yeah. Oh, we got that. We don't need it twice. X plus 5? Yeah. yeah, we got that. That's fantastic. That's our LCD. Now, what do you do with the LCD? First question. Should I be multiplying X plus 5 over X plus 5 right here? No. If I didn't have this, ignore, ignore this side. If I didn't have that side, that's exactly what I'd be doing right here. Do you see what I'm talking about? That's exactly what you'd be doing. You'd have x plus 5 or x plus 5, you'd have a common denominator, and you'd combine them. That's what you would do. As soon as I have an equals and some other fraction, that changes the plan. That says, uh oh, equals sign, now I can get rid of denominators. That's the goal now. So that's the goal. That means we're going to do this process on that problem. We're going to take the LCD and multiply every term by the LCD. So it might, get, it might get a little long here. Okay, that's there. Okay. Sorry, I know it's a little squished. I broke my own rule. Can you still read that a little bit? Still read that? And that? Okay, good. Are you okay in this process? Do you see how it's exactly the same as what we just did over here? It's just now we have different factors. Can you see anything that still simplifies? <coughs> Let's look at the first one. <coughs> Remember that this is still all over 1, if you want it to be like that. And you're still multiplying. And this is all over 1, and you're still multiplying. And so is that one. And you're still multiplying. What simplifies in this first fraction? Tell me that. X plus 5 plus 5 plus Just like you're simplifying it like normal, right? You extend line, you know how to do that. You simplify those out. X minus 3 are also the same. Tell me what we get out of my first fraction. Seven and seven. What's the next thing I'm going to write? Minus. Good, minus. You see the minus? Awesome, we got a minus. Can you look at the second fraction and tell me if there's anything else that simplifies in that fraction? 
Do you notice how if you do this process, you will for sure, you have to, if you found your LCD correctly, you have to get rid of your LCD. I'm sorry, your denominators. Do you see that? You're using those factors in your LCD. So when you multiply it by it, it's automatically there. It has to cross out. There's no other way around it. Unless you do something silly like distribute all this. You go, oh, let's distribute that, distribute the four, and then, then you can't cross anything out. And then you're kind of stuck, right? You have to go back and refactor it. It's very hard to do. We don't want to do that. So here we go, oh yeah, perfect, x minus threes are gone. How about x plus five? Can I cross out the x plus five here, folks? Yeah. Okay, so I already have the minus down. Tell me the next thing I'm gonna write. Four. Oh, don't forget about the four, that's there. And then what else? <clears throat> do you see that when we write it like this, do you see that that negative is going to distribute? Do you see that? Okay. Some of you guys are, are zoning out here. Zone in, I only need you for 12 more minutes. Let's get going on this. So yeah, that's going to distribute. Then we have an equal sign. What's the next thing I need to write? <coughs> Minus. Minus. Okay, that's good. That has to be there. What crosses out on the right-hand side? How about the 2? Yeah. So I still need that, and I still need the x minus 3. Yeah, I don't think it's just me. I think this looks a whole lot easier to do than that problem. Don't you think that? This looks a whole lot better. This has no fractions. It doesn't even have x squared anymore. We crossed that out. This is awesome. This is what we want to have. Now all we need to do is what we did on that problem. We're going to distribute, combine like terms that we have, and solve. So distributing, we have 7x minus 4x and minus 20. See where the minus 20 is coming from? Good. On the right hand side, minus 2x and plus 6. See where the plus 6 is coming from? That negative is distributing on us. And we, when we combine some like terms, remember like terms mean on either side of the equation. Here you have no like terms. Here you have some like terms. We'll combine our x's. We'll get 3x minus 20 equals negative 2x plus 6. Next question I have for you that I want you to answer. Um, am I supposed to get everything to one side and zero on the other side on this problem? <coughs> Is this problem the same as this problem? No. What's the difference? All right, x squared, that's what we do. That's the only way we know how to solve it right now. You get it equal to zero, and you factor it. Do I need to do that here? The answer is, I don't even have an x squared. This would do me no good over here. This is get rid of the smaller variable, and then you have something very easy to work with. What's our smaller variable up here? Negative. So how do you get rid of that? Perfect. So we get 5x minus 20 equals 6. Good, add 20. Okay, now we're on the home stretch. I'm going to move over here. 5x equals 26. Our last step is always to divide if there's a coefficient. That's it. As good as we can do on that problem. Is it okay to get fractions out of a fraction problem? There's only one thing that you need to check. Okay, I need to make sure that you see this. Watch up on the board here. There is one thing you need to check. You need to make sure that you can plug this number in and that it's legal to do that. Here's what I mean. Notice we have fractions here, right? What's the one number you cannot have on the bottom of a fraction? Zero. So if you were to plug this in and it made zero here or zero here or zero here, you'd have a problem, right? So you plug that in. Is 26 fifths minus 3 going to give you a 0? No. The only thing that would give you a 0 would be a 3 here, right? The only thing that would give you a 0 here would be a negative 5. Remember to talk about the domain stuff? So you check that. Just make sure that this number is not going to give you 0, and you're OK. That's a solution. If it gives you 0, then you cross it out. It's not a solution. We will understand that problem. Good. All right. Okay, like I said, we're going to do one more together. I will give you um, two to three to do on your own, and then we're, we're done. We're, honestly, we already had this section kind of covered um, from the first day of class. I mean, it's the same stuff. It's just now you're working with expressions like, like those. So same idea. So we're going to do that and then um, give you some practice.
Okay, last one we're doing together. I want you to walk me through it, though. Tell me what I need to do first. <coughs> Tell me what I need to do quickly. Let's go. Three over one. Three over one. Great. That's a great idea. So we can do that. What's the next thing I need to do? Okay. LCD might mean you have to factor. Here we don't have to. That's fine. Everything is factored for us. The reason why we put this over one is so we don't confuse this three as part of our <coughs> LCD because this, this three is not part of our LCD. What is our LCD here? Well, that's not bad. I like that. Okay, we have LCD. What's the next thing I'm going to do right now? Okay, times how many things? So that's here, I'll put it in parentheses. That's here, I'll make sure it's in parentheses here. And that's also here. Should it be x minus 1 over x minus 1 or just x minus 1? Over one. over one. Okay, we can do that also. Why am I able to do this? Why can I get rid of denominators? What tells me I can in this problem? Good. Okay, so maybe I put this over one if you want to show that. That's fine. Let's cross some stuff out. This is the best part of this process. Let's cross some stuff out. Here I see the x minus ones are gone. What am I left with? Then I have an equal sign. I see the x minus ones are gone. I get what? And then over here, I have plus 3 times <coughs> x minus 1. I'm not going to distribute, just in case that was a minus sign, because I want to see that. So I wait for distribution, just one step, not a big deal. 5x plus 5, sorry, equals 5. And then we're going to get the 3x minus 3. Still okay so far? Next step, what do we do? Quick. So we have 5x equals... 2 plus 3x. That's combined like terms. Next step is, well, either A or B. Choice A is you get everything to one side and 0 on the other side. Choice B is you solve this just like it is because you don't have an x squared. Yeah, choice B. So we're going to do what? Perfect. We get 2x equals 2. Very good. And the last step is? And we get x equals 1. I would feel good about that solution. I would too. I would too. Except, I want you to look, at, look back. We just talked about this. Oh. Is that a solution? No. Yeah. It looks like it, right? We solved it. We got an answer. Look back at the original problem. Take that one, plug it in, look at the denominator. Is that okay? No. Here? Hey, that's, that looks good. It's fine. Here, that looks... Fine. That's fine, that's fine. Here, that's fine. Here, oh crap. That's not good. What happened? We plugged in one, we got a zero, right? On the bottom of our fraction. Why does that happen? The answer is when you take this and you multiply it by the same, by the LCD, you're essentially moving this to the top of your fractions. You see what I'm talking about? Essentially, that's what you're doing. In doing that, you can create some false solutions. This is a false solution. So, what you do, you get all the way down to here. That one worked just fine. That was fine. It didn't make zero. This one, this is a problem because when I plug this in to the denominator, it gives me zero. That's undefined. If you get something that's undefined, all you got to do is solve it down. You're not going to do it until the very end. Just cross it out. That's not a solution. There is no solution to this problem. I know you're not used to this. problems not having solutions, but this